Well, welcome back to another analysis behind the news. I'm not going to talk too much about the news today, but to point out something that I find very uh, disheartening relative to the problems in Europe. Uh, first of all, there was a lot of criticism this past week that Obama did not go and march in solidarity down the streets of Paris with these other world leaders. Now, I don't feel like being apologetic for Obama, but uh, at the same time, nobody was talking about Putin not being there. So what's the difference between Putin not being there and uh, Obama not being there? In fact, uh, what's the difference between Putin and Obama? But it, that's another subject for another time. The thing is that as they marched in solidarity, you'll notice that the front rank had the main leaders of the world there, who were there, uh, arm in arm, linked arm in arm, marching down the street in solidarity. Now, this is a communist demonstration style. Uh, for those of you who've been involved for decades, you know this. But for those of you who have not been involved or haven't noticed, uh, this is a communist tactic for demonstration, is to start off with the leadership linked arm in arm, elbow to elbow, uh, intertwined, and marching down the street. It's all orchestrated. Somebody tells them when to start to march and the whole business. The other thing about it is, if you take a look at all those leaders strung across the street, both in the front line, uh, rank and beyond, these individuals are basically uh, ex-communists, current socialists, uh, individuals of uh, dubious background who lead the countries uh, that they represent, all led by the socialist president of France. Now, solidarity itself is a socialist communist term. Solidarity first got its uh, prominence in the uh, lexicon of political activity through the solidarity program in Poland under Lech Walesa, which was a Soviet operation from the onset. And that has all been exposed, except it has not gotten into the media very well, uh, to, uh, to the, the uh, detriment of the average person studying the fall and collapse of communism. Because that whole thing was contrived, it was all set up, uh, solidarity, like I said, is a socialist term. When they first started using that term, I said to myself, this is an operation out of Moscow because of the vernacular. And you can recognize that. Uh, for instance, when I visited uh, Vienna and went to the Socialist Party headquarters, I found that their organ, the, the newspaper of the Socialist Party of Austria, was called Solidarity. Now, that's just one little example of the use of this term. It's rampant through their vernacular. They use it all the time. They, they promote these words and phrases and so on and so forth into our language to get us using their vernacular, their definitions, and that sort of thing. As a result of this solidarity, France is now putting together uh, their equivalent of the Patriot Act, which gave us Homeland Security, uh, TSA, and that sort of thing in the United States. The French are already disarmed, so now they will have even more draconian laws in the name of free speech. Uh, you know, free speech is, means one thing to someone and another uh, something else to somebody else. Uh, free speech uh, is a wonderful thing, but it should be free speech pretty much for everybody, unless, of course, you're advocating something like treason, uh, uh, I mean, out and out violent overthrow of the government and that kind of thing. It's like you know, yelling uh, fire in a crowded theater. Uh, there are certain things that where a line has to be drawn. Now, I suppose some of you libertarians out there are very upset with that. But believe me, there are, are things that are going on uh, that they advocate free speech for, which are designed to destroy our society and, and our government. The other thing is, too, that when you're talking about solidarity with Charlie Hebro and that sort of thing, Hebro, uh, how do you 
how do you take sides between the terrorists who are bad and and the Hebro publication? I can't because I know what the Hebro magazine stood for and what it's all about. The editor was communist. They have such blasphemy and vileness within the magazine itself that there's no defense for it. Okay, you've got free speech. They're using it to destroy the French society. And so now everybody locks arms and marches in solidarity for the lesser of two evils. I don't know if it's the lesser of two evils. Now, what happened as a result of all this? They sold millions of copies of their magazine when they were really in financial straits. Uh, they, were, they, they were constantly on the edge of bankruptcy because the average person in France wanted nothing to do with the publication because it was so vile. It attacked Christianity worse than it attacked the uh, Islam uh, religion. So the thing is that how do you come down and, and, and take sides when both sides are evil. I prefer not to. I say a pox on both of them. But it is being used out of the ignorance of the average citizen for a lot of these things because they don't read the magazine or they don't live in France or whatever it is to come out in support of something called free speech. Yes, we need free speech. And yes, it is it is enabling us to be able to criticize our government, to be in, uh, different from our government, to advocate even a different government. But the advocating of violence and, and that sort of thing, or actually performing acts of violence, uh, that's not right. And a lot of these organizations that we give free speech to advocate violence. Uh, we do that in our own country. Uh, I pointed out before, that when you go to rev.com, that is on a lot of these signs being used in these demonstrations across the country. Yes, they have free speech, but you go to that website and you find out these people are very, very dangerous. They do advocate the violent overthrow of our country. They do advocate communism and that kind of thing. And at some point you have to say, what do we do about that? How can we, how can we uh, stop where we're going when you see so much violence in the streets and it's organized violence. Part of it is education. In fact, most of it is education. These people would get nowhere if our population and the French population were well-educated. And by well-educated, I'm talking about the classic liberal arts, those areas that give us the idea of free speech uh, as a God-given right and that sort of thing where they understand the wilds of the left uh, and the lies of the left. I wanted to use some of this segment to give you a little history lesson on how they can fool people. I'm not going to do that. We don't, we're running out of time. But because people are ignorant of history, because people are ignorant of uh, classic liberal arts that gave us the Constitution of the United States, we are being fooled into the acceptance of more and more control. And it's always done in the name of some crisis, some emergency. I would have no doubt in my mind that someday, way in the future, maybe after I'm dead, who knows, I'll find out that there was a connection between the terrorists and the people that really uh, run these kinds of magazines. There has to be based on the results and the reaction that comes about as a result. It's very dangerous. And don't allow yourself to be manipulated into supporting something that is equally as bad as the other, which these, in this case, they are. They're both as bad as the other one, whether it's the magazine or the terrorists. Until next week, we'll see you then.